Hello, and welcome to our first edition of Community College News, news for all six MBCC campuses, produced by journalism students at MBCC Woodstock. In our first story, New Brunswick has vowed to become a healthier province. Youth and adults are being encouraged to take a little bit of time each day and get active. Jocelyn has more on the Ball is in Your Court campaign. So we started at people, though, the high school. Our school. People in the wellness program gathered at the Connell Street Raceway on Monday. It began the Ball is in Your Court challenge. The walkers have agreed to take time every week to engage in physical activity. Premier David Allward joined the group to encourage local participation. The group and Allward took time out of their lunch hour to take part in some physical activity. Each of us wins by uh, becoming more fit. I know for myself and my wife, uh, I'm a type 2 diabetic. So uh, that hit me a, a couple of years ago, a little more than two years ago. Uh, it's not always easy given my lifestyle and what I have to deal with every day, but it is important. Among the participants was Kathy Sherbert Orser. She is a wellness consultant for the Western Valley Wellness Network. She and other consultants are hoping to attract more people to the program. We're up to 19 commitments now, and the program only starts officially October the 3rd, so we're really doing pretty good. We've gone from three commitments on the first day to up to 18 or 19. The wellness program will be officially launched October 3rd. Each participant will have the chance to win prizes. And one of uh, the types of incentives that uh, bring people along or when they have a chance to win something. Western Valley has the chance to win a thousand dollar top prize, five community prizes, five school prizes and five organization prizes. And they can be anything from a hat to gym memberships to well New Brunswick stuff, t-shirts, everything. So that's how the, it's, there's twenty thousand dollars worth of prizes provincially. The turnout for the first practice of the Balls in Your Court wellness program was a positive one. Sherwood Orser and Allward are certain they will continue to see an increase in participants. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Today across the country, communities and schools are taking part in National Tree Day. Here at MBCC Woodstock, the landscaping program took part in the celebration. Jill Constantine has more. The students of MBCC Woodstock were joined by the mayor, principal and president of MBCC to plant a tree in honor of National Tree Day. They were replacing a tree that was destroyed in a storm last year. Um, the tree that we're replacing was uh, destroyed by a flood that happened here last December. It was more like a flash flood. And we've lost, we've lost two or three in this area by the riverside. On March 2nd of this year, a private member's motion passed in the House of Commons, declaring the first Wednesday of National Forest Week National Tree Day. Here in New Brunswick, 40 schools are each planting a tree. Although many are excited about the success of National Tree Day, some feel that the community could be doing more. I don't really feel like planting one tree is making the biggest footprint as if the whole community planted more than one. Darling hopes that in the future she will be able to keep her students involved in National Tree Day. Oh, we planted one tree this year, or, you know, maybe there'll be, you know, five trees next year, maybe there'll be ten trees next year, you know. Um, so we're looking forward to next year and, and um, maybe help beautify the town and around NBCC. During the ceremony, Darling said that the planting of trees along the riverbed will help deter erosion. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Michael McDonald sat down with NBCC President Marilyn Luscombe to discuss some of the changes happening at NBCC. Okay, hi Marilyn, welcome to NBCC. I Thank hope you. That tree planting was uh, a lot of fun for you. Just have a few questions. Mm -hmm. On the subject of the Board of Governors, it's been more than a year, I understand, since it was formed. How has the shift from a, uh, a six autonomous campuses to a central Crown Corporation system uh, been, and what does that mean for the faculty and students? Uh, well, it's an evolving process. The, um, for the first time, as you're indicating, uh, the college is being uh, moved out of government um, because in previous lives it has, uh, for the last number of decades, it's mainly been run out of the Ministry of Post-Secondary Education, Training and Labor with an, either an assistant deputy minister or an executive director in that ministry overseeing the college. For the first time now it has a board of governors and one of their prime responsibilities was to hire a president and CEO and I was the lucky one that uh, was chosen to do uh, this challenging and intriguing work. 
So we're building a team and we're building efforts with the, uh, the direct involvement of our campuses through our campus principals on the senior, who sit on the senior leadership team uh, to, uh, one, take some of the services that were previously in government that I don't think there's a full realization about that most of the H, uh, human resource services, facility services, IT services and uh, financial services were all within government. So as a now independent association, we are taking those out. There's a transition period up to March 2013 and we're building a capacity to do that ourselves. We're looking at the ways that we intersect with finance and IT, the services we have on campuses, the services that we need to run that from a college-wide level, see how they work together and realign and streamline those to every extent possible so that we're effective and efficient in the college, in our program renewal area, in the area that touches students the most. We're ensuring through collaborative efforts and through labor market analysis and through um, efforts to be um, uh, conscientious with our community and the labor force, the people who will hire our graduates, that our programs are uh, being renewed in the right kind of way, that they continue to improve as much as possible, and we're using evidence based on the success of graduates, etc., to both renew curriculum within programs, but also to say, okay, into the future, what should the program mix look like, what program should be where, etc. Speaking of opportunities, there's an open seat for a student representative. Mm -hmm. What sort of uh, responsibilities or role will that student play? Well, uh, the Board of Governors, as I indicated, they would have the same responsibility as any Board of Governors. So, as, uh, and we need uh, voices from various uh, areas in society on our board to make for good decision making about what the future of the college will be because the board sets direction. So a student rep as uh, the other 14 board members will contribute to the direction of the college. They'll in, uh, help ensure and make me accountable with the staff because uh, I'm their only employee. So they, they both approve my goals and objectives and they evaluate my performance and thus the performance of the college. That's one of, uh, of the board student uh, rep's responsibility as well as to help to provide that oversight. And we have to run a financially uh, good ship. Uh, we have to balance our budget. So the board uh, oversees that. They monitor progress uh, on uh, budget, budget allocations, making sure we're balanced and that our finances are being used effectively and efficiently and that we have quality oversight policy, uh, processes. So the board is a policy governance board. It sets down policy around what its accountability is and then it directs me to do the work of the college and expects me to report out on that. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for students to gain leadership skills uh, and uh, I was a president of uh, college in British Columbia at Selkirk College uh, before this and uh, our college had two student representatives on the board in the legislation in BC and those students who went through over that ten and a half period I was there I saw growth in leadership skills and responsibilities. Uh, one of the things I will say is that, um, that you, as a student you would come to the board table with your student eyes and your student voice but every board member has to take their particular hat off and act in the best interests of the college. It's not a forum for minority interests or whatever or the particular interests of the student body even though you bring that knowledge and expertise that other people around the table have. So that is a responsibility of a board. In the end, uh, you bring your opinions to the table based on your experience, but then you take your, all your hats off and say, as a board, 15 members, we act in the best interest of the college, and sometimes we have to make tough decisions. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Marilyn. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, same to you. Every one of our campuses on a regular basis hold events for students. The Woodstock campus just held its annual corn boil. There were hamburgers, hot dogs, and of course corn in the courtyard of MBCC campus on Tuesday. Well today we're having an orientation barbecue here at MBCC Woodstock for all the students and staff to get together and have a bite and enjoy some social time together. 
For as little as a dollar, students and staff were treated to an all-you-can-eat barbecue and corn boil as part of the fall festivities. A great event which helped out those starving students who are trying to save a buck early in the year. Um, it's great. People get to eat. Because it's yummy? It's good, I guess. Cheap food for people who are on a budget. <laughs> the students sat around the cafeteria and mingled while enjoying a great meal. This is an annual event that we try and do every year um, in the month of September for orientation for the, all the new students. And here's a look at some upcoming events at several campus locations around the province. At the various MBCC campuses, elections are being held for executive positions on student representative councils. Nominations have closed in Woodstock, St. Andrews, and Fredericton as of noon today. Students are running for 16 positions at these three campuses. 10 students have been elected to positions by acclamation. Students with interest in impacting how the college operates can also run for one of the available positions. The deadline for nominations is this Friday, September the 23rd at 4 p.m. and the winners will be announced on the 13th of October. For more of our work, visit jschoolmbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.